What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Um, it's currently 2.22 on January 12th, which means it is the 12th day of Keto Cut 2019. And um, I weighed in this morning at 173, and I think the last time I weighed in was last Saturday, and I was 176. I don't know, I'd have to check, but it is something like that. So. Um, I know that I'm down some weight and everything. Some of it might be water weight. Some of it might be uh, actual fat weight. Who knows? I do know my pants are fitting uh, or aren't fitting as well. So um, that's always a good sign that you know we're moving in the right direction. So anyways, point of today's video is going to be talking about five tips for getting into ketosis and staying there. And it's kind of what I do to make sure that I am keeping myself you know, accountable and staying in ketosis. So let's go ahead and jump right in and we'll start with number one. So the first thing I want to talk about is knowing your foods and keeping it simple. So obviously you're gonna be switching over to the ketogenic diet, which means that you're gonna be eating a lot of foods that you have been avoiding or foods that you haven't had before. Um, and so it's extremely important to know like which foods you're actually eating are gonna be high in fats and high in carbs. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, I've been doing it long enough now that I just kind of know, um, but when I first started, the easiest way for me to do that was using a tracking app, like uh, my fitness pal or carb manager. If you don't want to use one of those, that's fine. Um, you should be tracking, but you don't have to kind of thing, but what you do want to track is your carbohydrates. Keep those carbohydrates under 20 net carbs. If you don't know what net carbs are, I'll post the uh, equation for it down here. But um, that, that's what you want to track. If you track those standard 20 grams, you will most likely fall into ketosis. Um, and like I said, keeping it simple is also important. Um, sometimes you just don't have time to make like a full on big keto friendly meal. Sometimes you're just out and about and you just need something on the go. You're at a gas station and then you're you know, doing whatever. You run in real quick. It's good to know what foods you have there because then you can just go in there real quick, grab a couple snacks that are going to be keto friendly and then you can have that instead of falling off the diet and going to like McDonald's and getting like french fries and other things like that. So it's really important to know like which foods are keto friendly, which ones aren't, and then you can just kind of, you know, fly by the seat of your pants if you don't have time for the whole meal planning thing. Finally, last thing on this note is um, cheat foods. Cheat foods is that um, there are keto friendly foods such as uh, you know Quest bars, Quest pizzas, there's keto friendly chocolate bars, Halo Top ice cream. Um, all of those things are keto friendly and it's great especially if you're having that like craving that you just can't kick and you need something like in a hurry. They are, they're, they're great options. However, I highly suggest in the first month not doing those because they are um, something that you should be having in moderation and a lot of people don't have that self-control to just have it in moderation so the first month is really about forbit <laughs> habit forming and so by not doing those things you're teaching yourself some self-control and um, and then you're just staying a little bit more strict on your diet and finding other options to fix those sweet tooth so that is the first one so now let's go into the second one so thing number two is not only important for the ketogenic diet, it's just important for like life and diets in general. And I know majority of people don't really follow it, but it's extremely important, especially on the ketogenic diet, and that is drink water. Water has so many different benefits for you that I won't even go into all of them right now because the list would just go on and on and on. But especially on the ketogenic diet, um, your body's not retaining water like it used to, and you're also, or you should be, increasing your salt intake. Therefore, you are going to need to be drinking more water than you're used to. Uh, my tip is just, I kind of just have water bottles everywhere. I have one in my car, I have one on my desk, I have one by my bed and I just drink water. When I see it, I just sit there and I'll just start drinking on it. Um, if I'm eating, I'll have a glass of water. Even if I have something else with it, I'll have a glass of water there also. Um, I also suggest, suggest right before you go to bed having a glass of water, and first thing when you wake up, you should be having a glass of water. Um, this is, you know, just keep that water constantly incoming because it will make um, not only transitioning into ketosis and staying in ketosis that much easier, you'll just feel better in general. So drink 
lots of water. So the third thing that I found extremely helpful when I started doing keto um, is just to find motivation. Uh, I don't, you know, that's going to be different for everybody. Um, for me personally, I went on to Reddit and went on to the keto page. Um, they have a great community over there. Uh, people, long-term ketoers, new ketoers. They also have various different like other um, keto pages for like a female dedicated keto page and a uh, pregnancy dedicated keto page. But um, just normal, just the normal keto page is what I followed. And there's always transformation pictures on there, motivational stuff, um, recipes are on there. There's there's all sorts of stuff on there, and so it'd be great to be kind of sitting there and even on the days where I wasn't like being down, I would just get on there and I would look through and see somebody's transformation pictures. So like, this is me six months ago. This is me now. I was having health problems. I'm not having these health problems anymore. Um, it's just really just you know was motivating for me. Obviously, you find your own motivation. But I know there's a lot of Facebook groups, Reddit pages. Um, I know Goody Beats opened up a new Facebook page that's free to join, so you can go check that out if you want. Um, and then watching YouTube videos too. Um, you know, obviously right now I'm doing this keto cut, so I'm there. Um, Goody Beats, Jason Whitrock. Find what motivates you. Get some recipes. Join some groups. Um, reach out. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. I'll put it right down here at Dayman42. Um, I post a lot of keto recipes and workouts and um, just keto foods. Um, and I'm always, you know, interested in hearing DMs from people. So if you feel like DMing me, please feel free to. And uh, I'm more than happy to talk to you about your story and help you walk through any of this. So, um, next one. Okay, so things four and five are both things that aren't um, mandatory things. However, they are things that I have found extremely helpful for keeping me in ketosis, um, as well as getting me there in the first place. So the first one is going to be um, intermittent fasting. I know this is not for everybody, and so I'm not going to push it too hard. I think I actually have a video about it already. Um, but it's something that I've found that's extremely helpful for getting you into ketosis as well as staying in ketosis. Um, when you intermittent fast, it kind of puts your body into a um, state where you are already going to start burning your fat because you don't have any of that glycogen to go ahead and burn. Um, when you're first starting out, doing like, um, you know, an ext not an extended fast, but just a normal intermittent fast um, is extremely good because what it'll do is it will start burning through those uh, stored up glycogen um, storages in your body. And then after that, it'll start switching over to fats. So when you start intermittent fasting, it'll start burning through those glycogen stores faster so that it'll be forced to start using fats to burn his energy, therefore throwing you into the state of ketosis quicker. Um, it's also great because it helps you really control your calories, so if you're trying to lose weight, then um, that's good too, but I mean, that's not about ketosis, that's about weight loss, so um, really, yeah, it just, it just burns through all your glycogen and um, starts, you know, using fats quicker. That's why it's so great to pair up with ketosis. So the fifth and final, oh, that's four. Fifth and final thing is going to be exercise. Like I said, exercise is not something that's going to be mandatory, um, but it is something that helps. Um, besides all of the obvious, um, you know, health benefits of exercising, um, it also will burn through your glycogen stores because whenever you're exercising, your body's going to look for the easiest source of energy it can because you're exerting so much. And this is obviously going to be found in the glucose, which can be mostly found from carbohydrates. So it's going to start burning through your glycogen stores. But once those are all gone, and since you're not replenishing them, your body needs to find somewhere else to get energy from. And that's going to be from the fats. Um, so once you, know, once you start working out and everything, it helps burn those sources out quicker. So your body will start going to find fats quicker. So your body will be constantly um, in a state of fat burning as opposed to burning on this glycogen. Um, and exercising doesn't have to be, you know, an hour in the gym running on the treadmill or lifting weights. Um, it can be something as simple as taking a walk after dinner, um, you know, taking the stairs instead of using the elevator. It's, it's all those, you know, all those little small things that you always hear. Just get up and do it, you know. When you get off work, don't go sit on the couch. Go, you know, go walk. Take a walk around the park. Do something, you know. Um, any little exercise is going to help burn through that. Um, uh, burn through all those extra stores so that you can actually start burning fat quicker. 
So that's going to wrap up this video. Um, those are my five tips for getting into ketosis and staying into ketosis. Um, obviously, um, there's a lot more things that we go over. I could probably make this like a 10 list, but um, I got to get to painting my room because uh, daylight is going away. I guess you don't need daylight for painting, but um, it just seems like the right thing to say. So I said it. But anyways, um, those are my five tips. Hopefully they help you out. Um, hopefully your keto journey is going amazingly and you're getting the results that you're wanting to and it hasn't been too difficult. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below, send me a DM, um, follow me on Instagram, you can kind of track my photos and track my everything there as well as DM me there. Um, like the video, share the video, please subscribe to my channel, it'd be very much appreciated. I think, like I said, that wraps it up, so until next time everybody. Let's stay fit. Writing down every word you said just to watch them go.